Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. Today I want to show you this little device that I got. You can see here it says nuclear radiation detector and it actually detects nuclear radiation on in general it can detect ionizing radiation which is the type of the electromagnetic spectrum that is harmful to health. It is the type of detector is a Geiger, Geiger counter, as you can see here. So let's test the equipment and later in the video I will open it to show you the Geiger tube inside. Okay, let's open the box to see the contents. Here we have a little manual. It is in Chinese, I think. Uh, but also is in English. Okay. And what else? Here we have the cable for charging. This is a rechargeable device. It uses a lithium ion cell, works at 5 volts, so you can charge it using your cell phone cube and the cable which is USB and C-type USB for charging. There it is. So let's now see how it works. It is very easy to use. Here you can see the radiation that is detecting at this moment and also the cumulative radiation is shown here. The units are microsievert per hour and it has a setting for changing the units to display. Also there is an alarm which is set to one microsievert per hour. The device will emit an alarm when you reach this level of radiation. Also, there is a cumulative alarm. Of course, you can change the default settings of the values at which the alarm will sound. And here also you can see the average and maximum radiation levels that has been detected. Now, you can also, if you press here, you can see a graph of the radiation detected as function of time. And now if you want to customize the different functions, you long press here and there is a menu. First you have the units. The default is microsievert per hour, but you can also use micrograys per hour, micro rungstands per hour counts per second and counts per minute. Next item is the alarm settings. You can see here it is at 1 microsievert per hour. You can change it of course, the cumulative alarm and also to reset the alarms. Next you can change the time and date. It is wrong now but here you can change it to the correct date and time. Next, the alarm can be a light, vibration, sound. You can use all three or any combination of these three items. And finally, you can change the brightness of the screen and the language. Okay, now in order to test this device, we need a source of ionizing radiation and where we gonna have that. Well, there are some elements that you can obtain, relatively common, that show small traces of ionizing radiation. For example, it is known that bananas have small levels of radiation. Also, uh, different types of products that have potassium 
are slightly radioactive. This is because, as you may know, every element has different type of isotopes and in particular potassium-40 is radioactive. So when you have something that has potassium, there must be some traces of potassium-40 that show small levels of radiation. So for example, this is light salt, which instead of uh, potassium, instead of sodium chloride, it is potassium chloride. So this must have some small radiation level. Also, here we have some plant fertilizer, which has potassium, and it is supposed that this is also slightly radioactive. But if that is not enough, here I have a radioactive source. Oh, let me make a zoom. This is americium-241, which is a radioactive element. I got this from a smoke detector that uses the ionization principle, ionization principle for the detection of smoke and this is a source of radiation. It is a very small level of radiation. It doesn't even trespasses the skin, but nevertheless, it should be enough to work with our equipment. So let's see, I'm going to turn it on and we need to wait a few seconds in order for the value of radiation to stabilize. It is not zero because there is always some background radiation practically at every place on Earth. It will never be zero because there are natural sources of radiation, cosmic rays, etc. So we will have a residual value of radiation always. As you can see, it is slowly increasing because the device needs to make an average over some time. We are measuring microsieverts per hour. So at some point it will stabilize at a certain value. Okay, it seems that we have 0.08 microsieverts per hour of residual radiation. Now, let's see if we can detect something from the salt. No. I don't see any change in the reading. Okay, let's now try with the other product. A little increase, very small, almost nothing, but very small increase. So let's now see with our Americium 241 radioactive source. Okay, here it is, Americium 241, and we have 0.1 microsieverts per hour and let's see if we have some luck okay there it is the reading is increasing because it is detecting the alpha particles that are emitted from the source As I said before, the reading increases slowly because the device makes an average over a certain period of time. I don't know what time is that because it doesn't say nothing in the instruction manual. But there it is. We are almost at one microsievert per hour, which is the set. There it is. The alarm is now on because it was set at one microsievert per hour. 
and as you can see it is still increasing very good let's now see what's inside this device four screws and you can see the small lithium-ion battery and this is the heart of the device it is a Geiger Mueller detection tube this is responsible to detect the radiation when a particle passes through the tube You must be careful because these tubes work at high voltage, around 300 volts. So it is better if you do not open your device. So there you have it. A very nice Geiger radiation detector. If you need one, it is not expensive. The cost is less than $50. So I will give you some links in the description of the video in case you are needing one of these devices. Thanks for visiting my channel. See you in the next video.